Let's take a look at what Baker Mayfield has done in two years here in Cleveland. Good one year, not so good the next. Although I'm not as down on him as most people are, apparently. In uh, 2018, 63.8% of, of uh, passing completions against 59.4 uh, last year. Yardage pretty close when you think all things are considered. 27 touchdowns versus 22 last season. 14 intercept. This is the ugly one. 14 interceptions versus 21. <coughs> How about the fact that he got sacked 40 times? <laughs> that ain't right. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody expected that. What, why did he get yet. sacked 40 times? A bad line. Um, he held on to the ball too much. The receivers weren't at the. They weren't aligned. I think it was all. Yeah, there's that word yeah. again, aligned. I think it was all of that, right? The line was not as good as it needed to be, and John Dorsey didn't address it. Uh, Baker was not as quick in his decision making as he needed to be, and I think sometimes his receivers weren't necessarily where they were supposed to be. How can how can that possibly be? You got one thing to do, one thing to to remember. You're practicing all week. You know that on a certain play, you got to be there. What, they forget on Sunday? I, uh, the one thing about Odell Beckham is he can be a freelancer sometimes. <laughs> and, and Jarvis Landry really isn't. And so I don't think it's a coincidence that Jarvis Landry was such a security blanket for Baker this year. Right. You would have thought, uh, thought it would be the other way around. Yeah, that Odell Beckham was, you know, he struggled. I, I think they just couldn't get together. I, I just don't understand the logic involved. All right, so he had his first two seasons here. How about, uh, can he get back on 2020? You said you had a thought about that. I mean, I think he can. A lot of it's going to be on Baker, but the reality is with Kevin Stefanski and what he did with Kirk Cousins, uh, that play action, using more tight ends, more running backs instead of you know three receiver, four receiver sets, that's where Baker's better. And he's better out of play action. His rating was significantly better last year when he was working out of play action. And I think doing things like that are going to make him a better quarterback. The other thing, I know that one of the reasons Freddie Kitchens got, got the head coaching job was because of his relationship with Baker. But the reality is you can't be a friend. you got to be a coach and you got to be a player and know where each one stands in that. I think Baker needs some help in that. And maybe, maybe Stefanski, I don't know this for a fact, but maybe Stefanski, his personality, maybe he's got a better shot at succeeding with him than Freddie did. I would hope so. And, and Alex Van Pelt stood up there in his first press conference and said, right. we need to fix his footwork. You know, he didn't you know, gush over him. He didn't mm. you know, spend the whole time praising him. He said, we've got to fix his footwork. And so having that plan in place, too, uh, is a good thing. All right, let's take a look at what Alex Van Pelt has done. He was with Andy Dalton. 60% passing, passing completions uh, in 2018 and 19. Aaron Rodgers, uh, look what he did there, 4,000 yard seasons with the two of them, and he won the MVP uh, of the league award. Josh Freeman, 61.4% passing completions and uh, six interceptions with Van Pelt in uh, 2010 in the, with the Buccaneers. And by the way, you a golf fan? Uh, sort of. You know Jimmy Hanlon? <laughs> yes. Look at that picture. Is that, are they separated <laughs> at birth? I think they might be. That is unbelievable. Call. <laughs> All right, so, so that, that's where they stand. Case Keenum had his best year with uh, Kevin Stefanski. Let's take a look at that. 67.7 uh, completion uh, rating, 35, 47 yards, 22 touchdowns, a career high, and seven interceptions. So uh, it's a three to one margin there. 98.3 quarterback rating and uh, 11 and three record as a starter. That quarterback rating, does it, what does it mean? I mean, I, I know the definition of it, but what does it tell you about a quarterback? You have to be a little bit careful with it, I think. You know, if you can look at it as in generalities. If a guy has a really good rating, okay, that works. If a guy's rating is in the 70s or 60s, that's concerning. Uh, but how I don't necessarily... Win, how about if he like, wins games? Yeah, exactly. You've got to win games. And, uh, you know, I think quarterback rating can get a little bit overblown. Uh, when, when it, It's kind of a fallback stat, I think, is, sometimes. Is touchdowns versus uh, interceptions, is that a legitimate stat? I think so. I mean, you've got to throw touchdowns and you don't want to turn the football over. Yeah, you know, you've got to watch, and sometimes an interception isn't a quarterback's fault. And right. sometimes, you know, maybe he should have gotten a touchdown here where he didn't. But over the course of a season, it all it evens, evens out. out. I know yeah. you think about a guy, they throw a 25 yard pass, and a guy gets caught at the one yard line. Then they run it in, <laughs> and it sort of goes against the permanent record of the quarterback. Yeah, or a, a shovel pass that yeah. goes for 40 yards uh, or something. By the way, like I hope the shovel pass is not in the uh, playbook. <laughs> Hopefully, if it is, it'll be timed a little better yeah. than, than when Freddie Kitchen well, the dialed only, that. The up. only thing that makes sense is if it doesn't work, it's not a it's not an incompletion. I mean, it's not a fumble. Yeah, that well, that helped the Browns against the Bills. <laughs> right. That actually got him a win against the a Bills. Absolutely. 